Hello and welcome to another edition of Gel with Mark. In today's video, I'll show you how I made this funky print uh, using various resist methods like the biro resist method, the oil pastel resist method, the cornflower resist method, as well as uh, how I adapted the print after I wasn't that happy with how it initially came out. So let's get to it. So sometimes when I'm beginning a print, I don't necessarily have any idea of what I'm going to print. So with this one, I went onto Pinterest, where I sometimes find some source material, stock photos, that type of thing. And I just downloaded a load of different images, printed them all off. And then I just looked at some of them and thought, I'll combine that one with that one. So I print them all out so I can sketch my image. On this print, I decided to use this pretty crazy looking sphinx cat and I'm adapting it slightly by I just made it into a cyclops just because I like weird things and I also uh, found this picture of a body I quite liked the toes and I thought I would just try and do the outline of the body because I've seen certain types of images that I quite like where it's just a very abstract shape of the body and then all the details on the head. So now that I've done my tracing on this head of the Sphinx I'm doing a wax crayon resist method. I've done it before and I know it works. So you just put a good an amount of wax crayon all over the lines that you've drawn and where you've drawn the wax when you put it on a painted plate and give it a light rub that will resist the acrylic and then on the body i'm just doing a rough outline with oil pastel to see if you get a different effect but it works the same as the wax crayon resist does so now i've got my two drawings i'm lining them up on the plate roughly where i think i want them to be once i've inked up so now i'm putting down a small amount of this turquoise acrylic because i quite like the one that's one of my favorite colors at the moment i'm using it quite a lot so as you can see a few little spots i've used there just to make sure it's kind of in the right area where i want this head to go and it's just a case of rolling out the acrylic to a thin uh, covering on the plate you don't want too much otherwise the resist doesn't work very well so once you have a nice thin layer of acrylic, it's a case of placing your wax crayon resist image face down onto it and giving it a very light kind of rub over with just your fingertips really, or you can use the palm of your hand. I use my fingertips and then, you know, you can peel it off, see if it's done it. If there's a little bit left there, you can put it back down and rub a bit away. I was pretty happy with how this resist drawing turned out. Uh, it's never perfect, um, but it was, you know, it gave a, a good impression of the image that I was trying to transfer. So just to get rid of the excess paint that I don't want, I'm just wiping away with a wet wipe. And to get rid of the excess moisture, I just put a bit of copy paper down over the top and just press it down, take it off again, just get rid of that little bit of moisture that's there. Again, for the oil pastel resist, it's the same principle as the wax crayon resist. A little bit of acrylic paint where you want the image to be. Roll it out really thinly. Put the image down. A light rub over with your fingertips. Making sure you try and press over where you don't want the paint to stay. Uh, and then peel it off. And then that's where you've got the resist image. And again, a quick clean up with a wet wipe. At this point, I'd like to say sorry about the lighting in this video. It's all over the shop. I have got a nice ring light, as you could see in the first uh, bits of the video. But on this larger plate of mine, for some reason, it's highly reflective and kind of fairly off-putting. So I had to resort to using a different lighting system. I felt that I wanted a little bit more detail in the cat's face. So I'm doing a soft pastel pencil transfer. And I'm just drawing out the details on tracing paper. I have done a video on charcoal uh, transfer, which you can check out uh, after this video if you so wish. Uh, so it's a case of just drawing all the details uh, in the soft pastel pencil. Then it's flipping it over and placing it straight onto your plate, giving it a nice rub over, making sure all that nice pastel dust transfers onto your plate. Now we're ready to apply the paint to the plate. Sometimes I like to use slightly unusual methods of putting the paint onto the plate. And here I'm using a cotton wool pad, which you generally use to take makeup off of your face. I raided my wife's makeup drawer to steal a few. 
don't tell her though. So here I just literally wrap it around my finger and then I dip it into my mixed up paint uh, and I just apply it loosely where I want it to be on the image. Uh, I'm also using a cotton bud or I think if you're American, possibly Australian, you might call them Q-tips. I'm not quite sure, but I use these as well. And I always generally work in a reverse method when applying the paint. So meaning I do the highlights first and then I do the midtones and then I do the shadow areas. So as you can see here, I've pretty much put quite a lot of the highlights in. And now I'm starting to put in the midtone kind of areas. And I used a colour scheme closely to how a Sphinx cat actually looks, um, which is more kind of flesh tones. And I thought it would kind of work well with the turquoise layer that I'd already done in my resist method. The quite nice thing about using these uh, cotton wool pads and these cotton buds q-tips is the lack of control that you have when putting the paint down i sometimes it's good to challenge yourself i feel uh, with your control i'm quite a controlling person in my work and sometimes it's good i think to push myself and try different tools and try and relinquish some of that control to get that kind of spontaneity in your work just a little thought if you if you're quite uh, into having very controlled actions in your work and it's, it's quite a good way to help you loosen up when you can't control everything so i am using a bit of brushwork as well there was a few small areas that i couldn't quite get into and i wanted to have a little bit of precision in certain areas so once you've kind of done the highlights in the midtone areas it's you can start blocking in with the more shadow areas and then you don't have to be too precise here you can cover you know cover over your highlights cover over your midtones with that darker color and then you fill in all those little gaps as well that you might have missed with this kind of loose application of the paint using these cotton wool pads and the q-tips i'm gonna speed up the video at this point because i've explained so far all of what i'm doing and i don't want this video to get too boring because it's it's quite a long video this one so um just sit back and enjoy this sped up bit of magic I hope you enjoyed that. So here we are, uh, now we're on the, to the body part. So I'm just adding a bit more line work with uh, some Posca paint pens. Um, this one is a 7M, which has a round head and gives a nice thick line. I like using these Posca pens on the plates because they are just quite fun and you can do some quite expressive marks with them. This other Posca paint pen is the biggest in the range. This is a uh, 17K um, and that's a pretty beast of a nib. It's, I think it's 15 mil. At this point in the print, I've kind of gone a little bit off piste with what I was thinking I was going to do initially with the body. I was going to try and keep it quite abstract, quite simple, and I've gone a little bit crazy. I started to experiment a little bit with what I had in my art box. I had some acrylic ink, which I thought, eh, let's see what happens if you put this on the plate. Um, obviously very loose, beads very much on the plate, disappears. But I also thought, oh, I wonder what would happen if I just added some matte medium to all of this liquid. So that's what I did. And um, you can see it kind of makes its own paint, obviously, because it's just matte medium is just clear paint with no pigment added to it. Um, and it gave it quite a washy look, which I quite like, but I had far too much of the acrylic ink on the plate. So uh, maybe that's one to investigate further on down the line. So now I'm essentially just adding a base coat for the background of the body which I decided to use a neutral pale yellow type colour. So 
So that's the character finished on the print. So now we've got to think about the background. I knew I wanted to do the um, cornflower resist method to make this kind of, which makes quite a grungy textured uh, background. But I also wanted to do it in two parts where I thought because the head is quite light and, and quite bright with the pink, I wanted to kind of highlight this somewhat. So I decided to split the background up and uh, make a little stencil here that will go around the head of the sphinx cap and I will do it in two different tones. And because I decided that the background was going to be pretty dark, I'm generally using quite a lot of blacks and uh, deep, very deep tones, I thought I'll just block in the head of the Sphinx with some leftover paint that I've got on my palette, uh, just so it doesn't show through on the final print. Sometimes I do this, if I've, if I've painted uh, an image and I think the tone that I'm putting behind it, because some of the paints can sometimes have more transparency than you expect, uh, it sometimes shows through. So I always find it good to just be extra safe and block it in with a, with a if I want a lighter tone behind, or if I want the image to be nice and bright, I do a, a light tone as a blocking in colour just behind just to be safe I mean sometimes I'm thinking I overkill it a little bit but I'd rather do that than when I've pulled the print go ah should have just blocked it in anyway back to the print so now we're putting down the mask around the head I just stuck it down with a little bit of masking tape on the back not too much so here we put paint down then we put some corn flour and we just brayer it in together um until it starts to patch up a bit uh, it does dry out the paint quite quickly so you know just keep going with it and it's just a case of adding a little bit of paint and then adding a little bit of corn flour and building up the layers this is how i do it on this one here on the kind of masked area i thought i will go dark to light when applying the paint because uh, i wanted it's almost like a halo really around the head to be darker than the head itself so i've kind of gone black uh Payne's gray i think it was a mid-tone gray and then a warm gray and a titanium buff and i think that might have been it then we take off the mask now we've got to do the second part of the background and it's the same process as before but in reverse so I'm going from light to dark pretty much the same colours. But I did add a primary magenta to it and also a burnt umber I believe at the end. Now we're almost ready to put the paper down. I'm using this C White Mixed Media art board um, which is basically two pieces of cartridge paper onto glued front and back onto kind of a thin bit of kind of I don't know what it is cardboard maybe it's quite thick and um, I feel it's the best thing I've found so far for my type of technique of doing these gel prints because I use so much paint then I get a lot of warping if I use kind of just thin paper I mean it still does buckle slightly and with the like, as you can see, how much paint I actually use, but it's the best thing I've found so far. But I'm always using and trying different papers to see if I get a better result. But so far, this is the best that I've found. And I don't know if you can get this in America or anywhere outside of the UK. I believe C White's is a UK website but I'm not 100% sure. So now we're just putting down the base layer which is all black whilst it's still wet the board goes down give it a good press over I also put a weight on it and I leave it and this was left overnight. So now the big reveal let's see how it's actually turned out. I've said in previous videos that I feel the best way to get a clean pull is to give it a nice long drying time. Now I generally leave my prints because of the amount of paint I use. I leave it overnight for like seven, eight hours. Most of the time I get pretty much a clean pull. And here we are. Uh, this is what we got. But after looking at it, I wasn't overly happy with the body part. It didn't quite work out how I wanted. I was super happy with the face. I think the face is great. Just need a little touch up on the teeth, uh, but we can do that with a Posca paint pen. I was really happy with the background as well. I really like the way the grunginess comes out. And, you know, looking at this experiment with the ink and the matte medium, it's interesting. I like the beading that you've got from it. Brush mark, the, the painterly, the looseness of it. So again, like I said, that's something that I will investigate maybe on something else. And with the halo in the background around the head, I was 
I'm probably 90% happy with it. I think I should have probably used a little less corn flour. So it was a bit more universally dark on the last layer. As I'm not overly happy with it, we're going to change that whole body, I think. So let's see what we did. So I quite like looking at my prints that I've done. If I'm not overly happy with them, I take a photo of the actual image, the print, sorry, and then I put it into Procreate on my iPad and I kind of play about with it a little bit digitally. So I decided to go back over and find some different stock images that I like. And I found a new body and I've um, made a line drawing of it which I then print out and I do, well, I do a whole design. I kind of figure out the colors that I want to use as well. So I print it all out like I did before in a line format. And uh, here I've just done the, you know, I'm trying to replicate what I did on the head with the hand. So I've done the wax crayon resist. And now I'm doing the soft pastel pencil uh, transfer for the body as well. Also, I'm doing a little bit of stencil work here, but I'm cutting out this little image on his jumper because I want it a slightly different colour than the main body of the jumper. So again, we're using the same colours because it's the hand. So this is the wax crayon resist layer going down. Not too bad. A little bit pale, but not too bad. And I've decided to use a little bit of masking tape this time to clean away all the excess paint that I didn't want. Now what you see me doing here is putting my larger gel plate onto a big piece of clear acetate. Now this actually comes to bite me in the bottom a little bit later on in the, in the video, which you will see and I'll talk about later. Now just putting on the soft pastel transfer image of the body and that worked out fine and now it's a case of filling it in with the paint again. So on the gun I've do, decided to do the gun in, a, in the turquoise to follow on with the, the colour pattern of the whole print and uh, first of all I'm doing the dark layer on this part uh, so all the shadows first. I've kept the gun quite simple, so now it's just a two-tone gun. So the second layer is just the uh, highlights or the mid-tones, I suppose, highlights or mid-tones, it doesn't really matter. And that's just filling in all the rest of the gun. Now I am starting to fill in the hands. Uh, so luckily I had the colours from the previous printing session, because I did this over a couple of days, still on my board. So I was able to kind of mix the right colours fairly closely to what I'd already used. So again, it's highlights and then mid-tones, and then it's going to be the full darker tones of the shadows. And I'm mainly putting this on with a earbud. And you saw earlier that I used a little hairdryer. I always use a hairdryer on my work. And I want it to dry quickly. It's not a problem. Some people think you can't use them. You just got to be a little bit sensible about it. Low heat, not too close to the plate and keep it moving and you won't have a problem. You can see here that I'm going back over the turquoise layer as I, I've done before. That's purely because I don't want it to have any kind of transparency issues. Um, so it's just to be safe. So that's the gun done and the hand done. Now let's do this little stencil. So sometimes stencils can be a little tricky with little bits that move in the middle. So I decided to put this stencil on using a bit of a sponge because uh, I wanted a bit of the kind of slightly broken up texture. And also I thought it shouldn't move. That little bit in the middle won't move. If I put, put it on with a brayer or a brush, it may move. And you don't want a moving stencil. Now it's time to fill in the main bulk of the jumper with a solid colour. And this time it's going to be a light green colour. I allowed this to dry before putting the second layer over the top, completely covering the gun as well because this is going to act as my wet layer because it's then going to go straight onto the original print for transferring. I forgot to mention that I actually put a little paper stencil around the whole body of the uh, print just because I didn't want to waste paint willy nearly all over the uh, plate if I didn't need to. So there you see the print straight on top of the original print. And now this is where I ran into the problem with the Perspex sheet that I put on the back of my gel plate. Because my paper that I'm using is double thickness, it doesn't really bend. The Perspex sheet doesn't bend at all. So I couldn't get the Perspex sheet back off of my gel plate without really ripping the print to shreds. So I had to really tenderly 
ease the gel plate off of my print. So you can see it, is a, it was quite a slow process and a few areas it's starting to catch. So you see me with this little knife, ease the print down where it's catching. But it was a pretty successful transfer. I'm happy with the body and how it looked. So now we are adding a little bit of text, which I don't really do a lot in my work, uh, but I quite like the idea of this live evil because evil is an anagram of live. For me, it was a little bit catchy and uh, I thought it had a little bit of an amusing ring to it. And that's also why I did a bit of a contradiction on his jumper where the eye is actually the eye of Horus which is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph to protect against evil so this is a little bit of a play on words and symbols within this print so I've done a little bit of a biro resist uh, method on this uh, text and that's mainly just so I could get myself an outline that I could fill in easily um, with the colour that I want to use. And here I'm just cleaning up again with the old rolled up bits of masking tape to get rid of the excess paint that I don't want. Now with the outline in place, the next thing to do is fill in all the lettering with the paint of choice. And I've continued on with the colour scheme of the turquoise uh, with the text as well. So it all marries with the print. Here you see me laying down what is essentially a very low tack piece of art paper that children can is designed for children to use um, so you can stick it on walls in in floors and blah 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 um, i got the idea to use this uh, as a stencil piece from another youtuber called marta whose channel is called Colograph printing check it out if you haven't seen it she's got some quite cool stuff on there but i thought this might be a, a, an easier way of um because i needed to put another offset version of the text behind the lettering to give a kind of drop shadow and I thought this might work quite well because it's because it's low tack I can basically stick it straight to my gel plate without it moving too much so that's what I did it worked pretty well you've got to be careful if you do this technique like this because acrylic starts to dry you know quite quickly unless you've put batata in it to prolong the drying times or if you're using golden open acrylics you might not have this problem but if you leave the stencil around the text too long it sticks and tears when you try and take it back off so you've got to be quick so i did the first one initially and then i just repainted it freehand afterwards with that done for my wet layer i'm using matte gel medium and then cleaning up around where i didn't actually want any of the excess and flipping it over putting it on the print. I left this one overnight as well because I was doing it late at night and I needed to go to sleep. So in the morning, pulled it. And then to my misfortune, there must have been a little bit of spillage at the bottom of the plate and it ripped my layer that I'd done previously on the jumper. So I gingerly tried to put it back on. I was a man able to successfully retrieve the ripped bit of acrylic and i put it back on with a bit of gel medium to glue it down and then i fortunately had a very tiny bit of the green color left on my palette I added a little bit of water to it and then we painted over the top and you can't really see it so i saved it really but it was a little bit of an annoying thing to happen but all good in the end now we're on the home stretch and uh, almost finishing this print. So I just wanted to embellish certain parts of the print with uh, some Posca pens. So I wanted to do an outline on the text just to bring it to the forefront a little bit and away from the drop shadow. So I'm using a very kind of, kind of medium gray tone uh, and the Posca pen I'm using is a 1M, which is the finest Posca pen you can get. Just going around the lettering to make sure it stands out. And then I'm also finishing off the outline of the whole character in this nice bright yellow. I think it makes it pop from the uh, surface of the print. I feel it separates it from the background of the print as well and gives the figure that touch more presence within the full image.
I also thought that the halo needed a little something so I decided to do all these little tiny white lines around it just to give a little bit more emphasis to it. So there you have it, this is my Live Evil print. Gold star if you made it this far to the end of the video and a pat on the back because it is a bit of a beast of a video but there was quite a bit of process involved in making this print and also some, how should we say, adaptations that we needed to do to make it a much better print. So now I'd say I'm about 90%, 95% happy with this print. There's a few little things I wish could have been slightly better, but it doesn't matter too much. I just I just like doing a one pull print if I'm totally honest. So if I'd have done this first time around, I would have been well chuffed, but it wasn't to be. But I feel that I salvaged a print that wasn't really working that well. So that's what's nice about the gel print. It's that versatility where you can just go back in, change it, just print straight over the top. It's real quick and easy. And just this little bit of detail here, see, this is the um, cornflower resist. It gives a real cool, grungy texture, crackle effect, old kind of distressed. I love it. A little bit more play, a little bit more experimentation is needed with that. But give it a go if you've not done it. it it's really cool. It's, it's quite surprising the result that you get from it. So there you go. This is a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to come up with a, a finished print like this. Uh, with the how it initially came out but uh you know a little bit of perseverance a little bit of thought a little bit of experimentation and you can come up with all sorts of things so um you know have a play the gel plate's all about having fun any questions drop them in the comments uh please like and subscribe and um check out some of the other videos that are popping up on the screen now cheers then bye